Hi, I'm G. This is my art channel, and this is a ProMarker tutorial that I previously shared on the Letter Set channel. Hey, I was recently doing this picture of Julius Irvin, the basketball legend, also known as Dr. J, and I thought I'd share with you how I did the blended flesh tones. One of the first things that I do is a sort of a swatch, a color palette test. So I did that to decide which colors would work best for the flesh tones that I wanted to try and show. And a lot of people ask me what kind of paper I use, and you can see me using this type of paper, the Bockingford kind of paper, but it doesn't have to be this kind of paper. It can be something that is thinner, it can be a different brand, it's totally up to you. So for this tutorial, I took my scanned line art and I just traced that onto a piece of watercolor paper. So I do what I always do and I start with a small area. That way if anything goes wrong and there's a major catastrophe, it might not show, I might not have to restart everything like I would if I'd been doing a larger, you know, more important area of the picture. So I start with a small area and I put blush on over the whole of the hand to start with. And then I'm going in with my um, dusky pink to give just a slightly, you know, darker edge. Start to fill in some of those areas that are going to be shadow but without putting a color that is too dark in there. So the dusky pink helps me sort of set up where my shadow areas are probably going to be, but without going too bold and too dark to start with. So then I go back in with blush, and I'm immediately trying to blend just the edges of dusky pink. Probably doesn't really need it. They're probably blending because the colors are wet already anyway. But I'm just adding a bit of blush on the edges of dusky pink to make them really nicely, you know, gradually blend into each other. Uh, and then I make a bit of a mistake. Uh, because what I wanted to add was a slightly darker brown cinnamon, but I add terracotta, which is a much more reddish um, brown color. Uh, I didn't really want to add that. It's quite a dark color, as you can see, quite a strong color. Didn't want to add that one straight away, but I realized that I had done, so then I just have to try and blend that as best as I can using the dusky pink. And that's why I always start with a small area first, just in case this kind of thing happens. Because I'm sort of backing up, playing catch up now, trying to fix what I, you know, perceive as a problem. I've put on the wrong colour in the sequence, you know, because I've got them going from light to then gradually darker and darker until my very darker shade. So I'm just trying to kind of fix this before I move on. So when I'm showing you the arm here, uh, I should get the sequence right so you can see how I originally intended to color the flesh tones. Like I said, I used a sequence and I probably was using too many colors. I've used five colors or I've planned to use five colors here from blush that you can see here being the lightest uh, back to, I think it's cocoa, which is the darkest. Uh, and I probably should have stuck with four. Five is probably a little bit too much and probably being a little bit too fussy there. So I'm just finishing up there with the blush, trying to get a nice even layer of color, which is my base layer of color, which I'm then gonna try and work on top of. So the next color that I'm adding is dusky pink. I'm gonna add dusky pink again, just to start trying to show me where the shadow areas are gonna be, but without committing to a really dark shadow straight away. So I'm just popping this on top while the blush is still wet. So hopefully the two of them will start to just sort of fuzzily run together at the edges and I'm not going to get any hard edges. I want a nice soft gradual change of the colors and the tones here uh, to show the sort of 3D and the light coming from above. So I've popped on dusky pink and the next color I'm going to use is blush just going over some of the edges of my dusky pink so I can get that smooth gradual change of tones that I've just been talking about. I guess ultimately what I'm trying to do is show the muscles in his arms as having that sort of curved aspect. Um, so that's why I want to gradually make the tones um, change slowly and you know gradually. Here you can see me putting on cinnamon, which is the third color I was originally wanting to put on when I was doing the hand, which didn't quite work out. As you can see, it's a, it's a step up. It's darker than dusky pink. But I know that I'm going to use dusky pink to blend along the edges between the cinnamon and the other colors so that it'll show a much more gradual change rather than the sudden change that you can see at the moment. So here I am, dusky pink, blending along the edges of that cinnamon that I've just put on, just trying to make it change more slowly, more gradually. Again, given that effect that the arms are curved, those muscles are curved. They don't just suddenly change. They change gradually uh, as the light hits them. So here I am with terracotta, 
the fourth color, just putting it in to add some extra sort of shadow, some extra definition um, in the uh, cinnamon areas. And again, that's, that's quite a strong color, but I'm going to have to go back in with cinnamon and just blend along those edges very lightly so that the, um, the colors are blending together. So here I am just finishing up just with a bit of extra um, cinnamon into those dark shadow areas. And now I'm going to go to my lighter color, dusky pink, and I'm going along the edges using dusky pink. And hopefully both of them are wet at the moment. Both marker colors are wet, so they'll blend together, fuzz together a little bit on the edges, and you won't get any sort of hard um, edges where one color suddenly changes and becomes another. So now I'm in with my darkest brown, which is cocoa, and I'm really trying to use this sparingly. I just really want to use this in a little bit to show where the shadows are at their very, very darkest. I don't want to use it too much. Uh, and then I know once I've popped on cocoa, I'm going to have to go back in and use a little bit of terracotta along the edge of the cocoa. Again, just trying to smooth it out, keep those muscles looking curved and smooth. Uh, and then again, I sort of work backwards. So I've used cocoa, then I've used terracotta. Now I'm using a little bit of cinnamon and I'm going to use dusky pink again next along the edges of those darker shadows to try and show there is a gradual change from the darker shades to the lighter shades. Uh, and I think at this point also I'm looking at those edges and thinking with the dusky pink, oh, that's too strong, that's too dark. So I go right back to using blush and now I use blush along the edge of dusky pink Plus, if you remember, is my lightest um, shade of color here. So I just decide to put that on and leave a sort of curved um, oval pool of light on the top of each of the muscles. And as it's basically repeat those steps for the rest of the video, I have speeded up the rest of it so you can see the whole thing finished a little bit more quickly. <laughs> the finished blended flesh tones for Basketball Hall of Famer Julius Irving. So if you're trying to draw flesh tones, then I hope this ProMarker tutorial was useful to you. And the history of this um, video is that it used to be up on the Letraset channel, uh, and then when they decided to delete that channel, um, it got lost, and all the other videos did too. And it was always one of my most popular videos on that channel, and also one of my favorites. So I thought I'd share it again here as a sort of re-upload. Um, and I've got a few others kicking around, so if you want to see any other videos from the Letter Set days, um, then let me know. But equally, if you're like, oh no, that is old stuff, then let me know about that too. And if you want to see the actual finished drawing in its entirety, it's available on my uh, DA account. So what I'll do is I'll post a link to that below. Thanks for watching.